Elizabeth is quite possibly my favorite musical. Many people, even enjoyers of English language musical theater, don't know much about it, but it has been produced in various European and Asian countries, 15 different countries so far, and has enjoyed lasting popularity ever since its world premiere in Vienna, Austria on September 3, 1992. One of the most unique and memorable aspects of the show is the fact that the titular protagonist's love interest, if you can call him that, I'll get to the ambiguity in a second, is literally death. The portrayal of death has changed throughout the years, which means that most fans of the show will have a specific favorite, and discussions about the character and the actors portraying him can occasionally get heated. Just take a look at the comments section of almost any YouTube clip of the role being performed, and you'll be guaranteed to find someone saying X did it better. However, this video essay isn't really looking to make a statement about who is the best death. Instead, I intend to look deeper into how the characterization has changed. And why the Cern Brune 2022 concert production is really bad. Before we get started, I would like to deal out some disclaimers. Disclaimer 1. None of the criticism of the choices made for different portrayals of death should be taken as hate directed towards the different actors who have played him over the years. The way a character is portrayed also largely depends on the choices made by other parties, such as directors, choreographers and even producers, so the actors shouldn't be blamed for changes in the portrayal. Disclaimer 2. Because this video essay is read out by text-to-speech software, German language words and the names of actors will sometimes be mispronounced, which I dearly apologize for. For the same reason, I've used English translations as often as possible, for example, the character of Death Tort will be mostly referred to as Death. Also, I will use some German language video excerpts to illustrate my points. Feel free to turn on English subtitles for the video if you need them. Disclaimer 3, I will be limiting my examination to the Viennese productions of the musical, namely those in 1992, 2005, 2012 and 2022. As I briefly mentioned, the show has been produced in many countries over the years and the Japanese and Hungarian productions have been particularly influential, however, those productions are wildly different in terms of characterization, and in some cases, even the plot and don't really fit into the timeline of changes that the Viennese interpretation has gone through. Besides, the Viennese productions have all been staged by the original production company VBW, so technically the directors and producers of those productions should enjoy the largest amount of creative control. Also, for the sake of simplicity, I will only analyze the performance of the main slash principal slash first death actor for each production. That is, Uwe Kruger, who played Death in the original Vienna production from 1992 to 1994. Mati Kamaras, Death in the first Vienna revival from 2003 to 2005. And Mark Seibert, who played Death in both the second Vienna revival from 2012 to 2014 and the Skonbrunn concerts, the first of which was staged in 2019. Disclaimer 4, this examination will involve spoilers for Elizabeth the musical and mentions of potentially sensitive topics such as depression, death and suicide. Brief video clips of theatrically interpreted suicide will appear, although I have placed timestamps in the description below so you may skip them at your discretion. So, with all that out of the way, let's get into it. Michael Kunze is a German musical theatre lyricist and librettist known for translating several world-famous Broadway musicals into German, including but not limited to Evita, Cats, Wicked and The Phantom of the Opera. However, even though these adaptations were hugely influential in establishing the German language musical scene and are still being performed in Europe regularly to this day, Kunze is even more well known for his original musicals. The first of them was Elizabeth, with the libretto and lyrics by Kunze and music by his friend and colleague Sylvester Levi. It premiered in Vienna on September 3, 1992, produced by the Viennese production company VBW, or United Stages Vienna. Evita's influence on Elizabeth is apparent. 
Unlike some musicals depicting the lives of historical figures, Elizabeth is not an uncritical celebration of its protagonist. Instead, it is meant to deconstruct an icon. The most obvious similarity between Evita and Elizabeth is that both of them include a narrator who stands in opposition to the protagonist and isn't hesitant to point out their flaws. In Evita it is a working-class man named Che, and in Elizabeth it is the anarchist who murdered her, Luigi Lucchini. However, Elizabeth takes the deconstruction one step further, to describe how. I will provide a brief summary of the plot. The anarchist who killed Empress Elizabeth of Austria narrates a story about her life and death. Her depression and suicidal ideation are portrayed as a conflicted romance with the personification of death. Some of the central themes involve freedom in death, or otherwise, death never being far from her. Her mental illness inherited by her son, or, because of the family environment, induced in her son, and parallels of her son with her in this respect. Her position and actions as a mirror for the fall of the Habsburg dynasty. Her repeated rejection of death. The character, who appears to her at her lowest points, among others. Elizabeth Das Musical stands in stark contrast to earlier depictions of Empress Elizabeth, in particular the Sissy film trilogy from the 1950s, which stars Romy Schneider as a beautiful and romanticized fairy tale princess. The show even includes a number called Kitsch, where the narrator, Lou Kenny, points out that it is impossible for a modern audience to get to the truth of the historical Elizabeth's life and personality through any adaptation, all that remains of her is fictionalized, biased, reinterpreted and sometimes heavily commercialized kitsch. Because of its deconstructive nature, the show is not only about Elizabeth, but also about the people she unintentionally harmed as she devoted her life to chasing her personal freedom and individualism. From all of this, you might already see that Elizabeth is not simply a love story between her and death in the sense of X meets Y. Instead, it uses the musical convention of a love story to examine both the titular character's depression and the changing, or dying, of the old, late 19th century world, a time period that is often idealized in modern depictions. To that end, I'm now going to take a closer look at the character that is described as Elizabeth's lover in the libretto, Death. In the original Vienna production of Elizabeth, Death, or De Tort, is a mysterious, ambiguous figure portrayed by the German musical act Truva Kruger. In the original 1992 libretto it is said that he appears young, attractive and erotic, like a cult figure from the pop world who resembles an idealized representation of a young Heinrich Heine. Heinrich Heine was the historical Elizabeth's favorite poet. Death is young, charismatic and otherworldly. He takes lives by dealing out a literal kiss of death, looks androgynous, and operates on his own in human morality. He doesn't seem to conceptualize things or understand emotions the same way a human would. For example, when Elizabeth's baby daughter dies, he is wide-eyed and almost happy while he beckons the grieving woman. He is possessive and predatory, but also cold and detached. He doesn't love Elizabeth because of who she is but more for what she represents, and the same goes for what Elizabeth feels for him. Mama, wenn ich älter werde, such mir keinen Mann. Ich fantasiert. Alles, was mich glücklich macht, fall ich allein. Ihr redet wie ihr Vater. Träumen und Gedichter schreiben. The show is structured as a romance, but the relationship itself is very dark and even terrifying at times, because at its core, it's meant to represent depression and suicidal ideation. Death doesn't seem to have a solidified personal identity in terms of looks or gender, he can appear however you want him to appear. I already mentioned that the libretto describes him as taking on the appearance of Elizabeth's favorite poet Heinrich Heine, in one scene he appears wearing a dress to represent Mary Vetsra a lover of Elizabeth's son, Crown Prince Rudolf. He isn't singularly focused on Elizabeth either. This is clearly seen in the Act 2 number, Die Schatten werden länger, Reprise, which is a duet between Death and Rudolf. 
in terms of lyrics it's about the crown prince's growing desperation and depression in the face of anti-liberal thought within the empire and his own political powerlessness, and at the end, his decision to rebel and take action against his father, the emperor, but in terms of blocking it. This scene, along with what happens when Rudolf, driven to despair, decides to take his own life. Well, it illustrates that death can, and will, have entangled, manipulative, intimate, tempting relationships with people other than Elizabeth. Like it is said in the prologue. Mein Auftrag heißt zerstören, ich tu es kalt. Because it's in his nature, and after his task has run its course. Of course, it's debatable and ambiguous what Death's motivations within the show are. Does he, in some way, truly love Elizabeth like he says? Is he fascinated with her because he's bored, or perhaps because she's an instrument of destruction to bring instability to the Empire? Does he only use Rudolph as a pawn to tempt her closer to his arms, if so? Why does he then reject Elizabeth when his plan succeeds and she pleads with him to take her? These questions have several answers and depend largely on audience interpretation. Some might argue that his actions have no logic, and that his motivations are unclear on purpose. After all, the way Lou Kenny pleads his case with the judge in the prologue suggests that the character of death may just be a fabrication created by him to justify his crime. Uwe Kerger played Death from 1992 until 1994, and his portrayal, and his chemistry with Biadals, as Elizabeth in particular, were popular enough to land him the role of death in two further German productions, Essen in 2002 and Berlin in 2008. According to some rumors, he was also asked to reprise the role in the first Viennese revival in 2003, but in the end it did not come to pass. So, even though the 2003 production was in many ways a close replica of the original, with its costuming, sets, choreography and even with one of the Elizabeths from the original production, Maya Harkwart, reprising her role, there was one crucial difference. Eleven years after the premiere of the original production, the musical was brought back to Vienna. The run began in 2003 with the Hungarian musical actor, Mati Kamaras, as principal death. From the start, it was decided that his portrayal would be completely different, partly to avoid having people constantly draw comparisons between him and Uwe Kruger. To put it in his own words, I think I have another way to find a comparison to Uwe Kruger. He has a different death on the stage, and in my opinion, in this story, the death is very passionate. They have said that the death must be androgynous and everything. I have said that the death is the death for Elizabeth, and because of the fact that Elizabeth is heterosexual, she sets herself up for a man in the death of 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 the death. Wer optimal ausschaut. Ja. Ich, ich finde diese Brett, bitte, die, wenn, wenn das nicht Elisabeth wäre, sondern Franz Josef, dann der Tod sollte ausschauen wie Madonna. Ja. To be clear, death as portrayed by Matte does retain some androgyny. There is, of course, the miling dress, but in general his portrayal leans into aggressiveness and masculinity. However, there is still some inhumanity in the performance. Death is so intense precisely because human feelings are new and foreign to him. He reacts to things much more emotionally than Uwe's death does, and acts almost animalistically. To quote an excellent piece of analysis, he walks on the balls of his feet, creeping like a big cat, almost like he's stalking his prey. 
He growls and pants and is very rough with the humans he interacts with, almost like he's not aware of his own strength. He does seem to genuinely love and lust after Elizabeth in a human sense. But this is not because death was a human figure to begin with, it is because his fateful meeting with Elizabeth has profoundly changed him, just like Elizabeth is, in a way, changing the world around her. Another change from the original production was the addition of a new song, Wenn ich tanzen will, When I Want to Dance. Remember when I said earlier that audiences really loved the chemistry between Biadals, Elizabeth and Uwe Kröger's death? Well, because of that, a new song was written for the Essen 2002 production of Elizabeth, and it also made its way into the 2003 Vienna revival. When I Want to Dance is an interesting song. It's remained an audience favorite ever since its introduction, and it's often performed in musical concerts. It gives Elizabeth and Death a chance to sing a proper duet when none really existed before, save for the finale. However, it comes at a curious point in the story, at the beginning of Act 2, where Elizabeth has just reasserted her personal power and freedom by taking a stand in politics. She is at her most triumphant, so it is a bit odd for Death the personification of her depression, to appear now. Of course, it could be argued that he shows up to tempt her at this moment because of her lingering self-doubt or some such, but I digress. The addition of When I Want to Dance also somewhat lessens the impact of the following number, Mama, Where Are You? In the original production, Elizabeth's political triumph was directly followed by a song where her son, abandoned and emotionally neglected by his parents, is approached and befriended by death. The placement of the songs really showed the impacts of Elizabeth's actions, she may have achieved independence, influence and freedom from the outside expectations placed on her, but the way she detached herself from those closest to her came with tragic consequences. In any case, the introduction of When I Want to Dance shifts the focus away from Elizabeth herself and makes room for death to assert his goals outright. It breaks up Elizabeth's storyline a bit. In a way, the addition of this song was the first sign of the Elizabeth-Death relationship being prioritized over other themes within the show, like Elizabeth's influence on the world around her and her internal journey. Death acts very much like a jilted, jealous lover at times, and in the 2003 production, it is amplified by the more intense and human portrayal of the character. However, he still differs in one crucial way from other violent lovers depicted in musicals, like the titular Phantom of the Opera. It would be impossible to talk about the first Vienna revival without talking about The Vienna revival version of Die Schatten werden länger or The Shadows are growing longer is, to put it simply, super gay, like I described before. Death as portrayed by matic cameras is intense, and in the scene, he is single-mindedly focused on seduction. Rudolf really seems drawn to and tempted by the embrace of death. Again, this shows that despite the portrayal's humanity, death has retained his powers of equal opportunity seduction and is not at all hesitant to use them. The way Rudolf quite literally grapples with depression, the way he longs for death, is made abundantly clear by the choreography and acting. If Elizabeth was a clear-cut love story between Death and Elizabeth, such a scene would never appear, but because the show is as much about the end of an era and Elizabeth's impact on those around her as it is about the woman herself, the song and the despair it represents is absolutely integral to it. It would be a shame if the metaphorical strength was lost going forward, wouldn't it? The second Vienna revival, also known as the 20th anniversary revival, of Elizabeth premiered in 2012, with all new costumes, it came with many visible changes, first of all, Death no longer wears a period tailcoat or the mailing dress, instead switching between quite modern looking leather costumes, one black and one white, somewhat arbitrarily. The principal death was Mark Seibert, who had already played the role in the 20th anniversary German tour production of the show. His interpretation wasn't all that dissimilar to that of Matthes. I quote, I understand death like this, even if he is not a living person, he is a fantasy figure, you see death through the eyes of Elizabeth. 
So I imagine a man on stage, I don't quite imagine the androgyne that many of my predecessors interpreted as such. Of course that's okay too. In order for me to understand the love affair between Elizabeth and death, and that is the focus of the play, I, as Mark Sabert, would like to see a man and a woman on stage. In this respect, I tried to give my death a bit of that guy quality. This manliness mustn't become too much either, death must also have a certain elegance, because it sets him apart from the others very nicely. And, indeed, death as played by Mark Siebert is very masculine. He's not quite as aggressive or overtly seductive as Matte's portrayal, but he definitely is aggressive. Like he said, death does retain a certain elegance in how he acts. But in comparison to the earlier productions, the death of the second Vienna revival is not that otherworldly. Of course, this is just another way of portraying the character. In itself, death being explicitly masculine isn't bad, just different. Death being portrayed as overtly masculine is not the problem. It didn't really take away from the themes of the show in 2003, and in theory, there should be no reason for the 2012 portrayal to do so either. However, the 2012 production also brought changes to how death interacts with other characters within the play. The Myling kiss, the kiss that death gives to Prince Rudolph when Rudolph takes his own life, was consistently very brief and even violent during the Second Vienna Revival. This is not something that exclusively applies to Mark's death, so I'm drawn to assume that it was a directorial decision. The 2012 version of Marling leans heavily into the interpretation that Rudolph is just a stepping stone in Death's journey to get to Elizabeth, not a character with his own burdens and his own individual, personal relationship with Death. Even considering all this, there is yet another facet of Death that changed with the 2012 production, a facet that is even more influential than an actor's interpretation or any individual change in blocking and choreography. I am of course talking about I mentioned earlier that Elizabeth has also been produced in several Asian countries. One of the most prominent Asian productions, and the first international adaptation of Elizabeth, or rather, a series of productions, are those put on by the Japanese Takara's Yuka Review Musical Theatre Troupe. I won't go too deeply into Takara's Yuka, because it's a huge phenomenon and multiple academic theses have been written about it, but the relevant thing to know is that their version of Elizabeth is heavily adapted. It's to do with the Takara's Yuka approach to musical theatre. Practically all of their musicals are focused on the fairy tale romance between a man performing idealized masculinity and a woman performing idealized femininity. All of the Takara's Yuka performers are women, by the way. So, when the troupe first performed Elizabeth in 1996, the musical was thoroughly reworked to fit their aesthetic. As part of the reworking process, Kunze and Levi wrote a new song for the musical, called The Rondo of Love and Death. The reason the song exists is that according to Takara's Yuka tradition, the protagonist of every show must also be the leading man, and therefore Death, who was chosen to occupy this role, needed a solo early on in the show. The lyrics of Rondo are about Death falling in love with Elizabeth at first sight. They paint him as a much softer, more prince-like figure in line with the idealized masculinity that is so integral to Takara's Yuka performances. Takara's Yuka death is not, in the end, a sinister figure, he's just another worldly prince who falls in love with Elizabeth. It's a very different interpretation of the character, and it exists primarily because of Takara's Yuka's unique culture and aesthetic. In 2012, Rondo was inserted into the second Vienna revival of Elizabeth as Kein Kommen ohne Gehen, or No Coming Without Going. It retains the Takara's Yuka themes. Death sings about how Elizabeth is different than everyone else and that's why he's fallen in love with her, and it also replaces the earlier song, Dark Prince, where Elizabeth sang about her longing for freedom, and how she saw that freedom reflected in the figure of Death, and Death stood on stage and silently listened to her. No coming without going feels out of place in the Viennese production. To be clear, it's a beautiful song 
and it gives the performer playing death more to do, but it's in complete contradiction to the rest of his characterization. Death is not the protagonist of any of the Vienna productions, but the addition of a song written to frame him in that way muddles the narrative. It takes the focus away from Elizabeth's story, and serves to make Death's motivations explicitly and exclusively focused on the love he feels for her. With this structural change, the focus on the relationship between Elizabeth and Death has become central enough to overshadow the other, in my opinion more important, themes of the show. It turns the complex relationship that Elizabeth and Death have in the earlier productions to a mundane love story between a woman and a man who wears leather. The relationship is no longer rather worldly and profoundly different to what Elizabeth could ever have with her husband, which is, in my opinion, detrimental to both the storytelling of the musical and the relationship itself. Ironically, it has turned into kitsch. It couldn't get any worse from here, right? Technically this section of the video should be titled Schoen Brun 2019, as that is when the concert version of the musical was first performed in Vienna. Still, I am going to call it Schoen Brun 2022, as I will be analyzing video material of the 2022 concert that was broadcast by the ORF. It's a bit unfair to judge a concert production that was perhaps intended as a kind of showcase or cast reunion performance instead of a thematically coherent narrative with a statement to make, but I'm going to do it anyway. Elizabeth Schoenbrunn is very similar to the 2012-2014 Vienna production. The costuming, the song list and even a lot of the main cast are mostly the same, and as such, so is Death's portrayal. The concert setting means that the sets, blocking and choreography are sparse. The cast doesn't always interact much with each other, instead standing around while they sing to the audience. Death especially does quite a lot of this. However, there is one especially glaring difference to the 2012 Vienna production. They completely removed the Myling kiss. And, well, remember when Death was physically tempting and seducing Rudolf during their duet? That now looks like this, with all of the intimacy, and Rudolf's personal relationship with Death, a figure he says he's known since his childhood, completely stripped out. The metaphor of Rudolf taking Death's bait is clunky at best, and when it transitions into a veritable tug of war, well, all I can say is that the actors did their best with what they were given. The removal of the Myling kiss especially is completely nonsensical to me. Extraneous factors, such as trying to avoid close contacts because of the ongoing pandemic, do not really explain it when the Myling kiss was also removed in 2019 and the kiss between Elizabeth and Death was kept in both times. Neither do things like the actors being uncomfortable with it as the actors playing Rudolf and Death are good friends and have performed the scene together countless times before. As a blocking choice, it doesn't make sense either. Death taking lives by kissing people is established as a concept during the Elizabeth, do not despair scene, where she experiences suicidal ideation, and reinforced at the end of the show. There is only one explanation I can think of for this change, to make the show more simple more generic and more palatable to general audiences. In other words, more similar to other musicals hyper-focused on a central heterosexual romance. It's sad that anyone would feel the need to do this, and that anyone in 2022 would think that two men kissing on stage would somehow be too distracting or controversial in a large-scale production of a musical. So, what is death? It, or he, is, according to the Viennese productions of the musical Elizabeth, an attractive man. How that attractiveness is manifested has changed a lot over the years, starting with explicitly androgynous beauty in 1992 and eventually shifting to conventional masculinity by 2022. However, superficial changes aside, death has also changed at a more fundamental level over the years, gaining a larger role within the narrative and therefore operating more like a traditional musical love interest. 
in terms of how he's framed, the show is no longer really about the ending of a world and a woman's struggles with her mental health. Even though all of that material is still there, songs detailing Elizabeth's depression and despair, and songs criticizing the society she lived in and the way she has been portrayed in media after her death, the central focus of the show has shifted away from the original themes. With the addition of songs like When I Want to Dance and No Coming Without Going, and the changes made to how Death's relationship with Rudolph is depicted, it is now more about a man, or masculine figure, falling in love with a woman and stopping at nothing to get what he wants. Which was an element of the show all the way back in 1992, but it was never made central until 2012. Maybe the directorial intent was to cut away everything that wasn't considered central to the main plot, which is structured around Elizabeth's relationship with death, but to me, the show in its current form feels watered down and lifeless. Despite using the storytelling convention of a love story, the show was originally never about Elizabeth and death loving each other. It was so much more than that. But because of how powerfully that kind of story, a man and a woman interacting romantically, is ingrained into our culture, and because of how common a theme it is in musicals and other works, emphasizing it in marketing and playing into the romantic fantasy in storytelling makes the show, in a way, an easier sell. Certainly, the modern productions have their fans, with the show and Brune concerts selling well enough that the production has already been set to return in 2023. A lot of the audience probably doesn't mind getting to watch yet another romance between a man and a woman. But I wish it wasn't like this. I would hope that we didn't live in a world where somehow, having two men interact intimately and even kiss on stage is somehow considered less acceptable in 2022 than it was in 1992. Complex, central, sympathetic, explicitly LGBTQ characters are still rare in large-scale musical productions, so removing the intimate aspect of death and Rudolph's relationship really stings. And with the critical attitude that the show assumes in regards to Elizabeth, the time period and the story of her life, it feels unfair to Elizabeth herself to have her journey be overshadowed by overt emphasis on a romantic relationship. I really love this show, but with the directing choices made from 2012 onwards, a lot of the things that made it, and the character of death, special and unique have been removed. I wish I could watch Elizabeth and see Elizabeth, not a Habsburg version of The Phantom of the Opera. There are so many musicals that focus on heterosexual romance above all other themes, and I don't think the world would be poorer if Elizabeth didn't. It seems unlikely that any substantial changes will be made to the Schoenbrunn concert production before the next performances in 2023. Still, my hope is that in the future, if there will be another Viennese non-concert staging of Elizabeth, at least some of the original ambiguity, complexity and queerness will be reintroduced into Death's character. Also, VBW needs to cast a woman as Death because I'm gay. Ich lachte, war mutlos und hoffte mal. Doch was ich auch machte, mir selbst blieb ich immer treu. Die Welt sucht vergebens den Sinn meines Lebens. 